wrong. Those horses should have been ready. Tom! Ugh. Jack! Jack! Tom Delaney, station agent. My brother's got to be around here somewhere. Jack. Brother Will, where'd you come from? Who did it? Who shot you? Two uh, drifters. Uh, well, ask for a meal. What they, what they wanted was what was in the safe. for him, Mr. Rimble. You've already done enough and done it very well. Jack. Those two drifters, what did they look like? Just ordinary. 20, 23 or 24. One, one about, one, one dark, one light. Did you hear any names? No. No names. They just rode in 
ask for a handout. Tom fed them. But no warning, nothing. They, they just started shooting. Did you get a look at their horses? A, a cold will. Oh, oh I, I, I hurt. Look, I, I think you ought to let him rest. He, he needs all the rest he can get. Don't you think I know that? You think I like asking him questions when he's hurt so bad? the stage. No. You'd have never made it over those roads in here. How long would it take? Well, 60 miles to Virginia City and the doctor, and 60 miles back. Three days at least. What do you think, Haas? Will he last that long? Well, I ain't no doctor, Mr. Rembrandt. I know that. I'm just asking what you think. Well, he's, he's got a bullet lodged in his lung that's right close to his heart. There ain't no way I can get it. I found this gold receipt, $15,000. You keep that kind of money around here? That's the weekly shipment from the Horn of Plenty mine. I guess the killer's got it all. It's a lot of money. And a good reason for them to ride hard to new country where they can spend it. There ain't been no change as far as I can tell. Come and get it, boys. It ain't much, but it's the best I could do. Riding out at first light. Us, I'd appreciate it if you'd stay with Jack. There's no doubt in my mind you can do more for him than any of the rest of us. Look, I can start tracking him. Why don't you stay here with your brother? No, I'm the lawman here. It's my job. Overland stage men were shot, and an Overland safe was robbed. Okay, if that's the way you want it, I'll go along with you. Me too. You can count me in. Thanks. Riding with the posse is a little out of your line, isn't it, Mr. Willow? There will be a lot of bullets flying around before this is finished. I may look like a dude, Mr. Rimbo, but I've done my share of hunting. I can hold up my end. Well, we'll find out, that's for sure. There are rifles and shells in the storeroom. Plenty of food and camp gear. Well, it's still a couple hours before sunup. Why don't you try to get a little rest? Let's go. Joe, you be careful, you hear? You got a hunch you're gonna have more trouble than you think. I'll watch it. to water their horses. Yeah. They're swinging north again. That's the second time they've changed direction. These tracks are fresher, too. They're not pushing too hard. We're picking up two or three hours on them. Probably don't know we're following them. Come on.
I'll try some hot coffee. Thanks. You know, it took me three years to talk my brother into taking that job with the stage line. He was on the payroll only two weeks. Told me I threw too big a shadow. He didn't want to get lost in it. So he kept moving, looking for a job he'd like. Tried ranching, bronc busting, pharaoh dealing. Wasn't until Tom Delaney came out of retirement and took over the Red Creek Station that Jack changed his mind. Yeah, I met Delaney in Virginia City. He seemed like a fine man. The best. Made a driver out of me, then a guard. When he quit, he put me up for his job. He did more for me than... Than any man I ever met. First time I ever got mixed up in anything like this. You ever ride with a posse before? None that ever caught anybody. Murder, robbery. That old man shot in the back. It's just about the worst thing I ever saw. Yeah. Hanging's too good for whoever did it. You think they'll put up a fight? I don't know. But Rimbo's hoping they will. Yeah, that's what he told me. Save him the bother of a trial. Might not be such a bad idea. You ever kill anybody? No, nope, never even came close. But I never had a good reason before. Me neither. Want some more? No. That's got to be the worst excuse for coffee I ever tasted. Shouldn't be. I only used grounds five or six times. Yeah, that just might have something to do with it. If this is a hold up, you sure picked the wrong men. We ain't got a dollar between us. Oh. You're under arrest for murder and robbery. Murder and robbery? We didn't kill anybody. We, we never stole a penny. You were at the Red Creek Station. We tracked you from there. Sure, that they give us a meal, hot cakes and bacon. That ain't all you got. You killed Tom Delaney and left my brother for dead. Then you cleaned out the safe. There's a rope waiting for you two in Virginia City. No, no wait a minute. Uh, I don't even know what you're talking about. You've got the wrong man. You keep talking, you won't get to Virginia City. All right, get over there. Go on, move. We'll be riding pretty soon. Let's get our horses. Good idea. Right there. I got some questions for you. Anything you want to know, mister, you just ask. All right, let's start with names. I'm Stubb Morgan. This is Johnny Hill. You were at Red Creek Station, right? But we didn't kill anybody. You, your gun was fired. Sure, one shot. We had fried rabbit for supper last night. One shot of six doesn't make any difference. The barrel looks and smells the same. Mister, how come you're so sure we did it? I mean, there are other men riding by that station. You're the only one that left fresh tracks. Besides, we got an eyewitness that gave a pretty good identification of you. There's got to be some mistake. If there is, we'll find out when we get back to Red Creek. That fella tearing up our gear. If he thinks we put a bullet in his brother, we won't live to get to Red Creek. You'll get there. Don't make any guarantees you can't keep Cartwright. All right, you two. Where'd you hide the gold? We don't know about any gold. We'll see. You both fit the descriptions, and you had a gun that was fired. That's good enough for me. Come on, on your feet. Get your horses saddled up.
Come on, hurry up. Look, mister, this doesn't make any sense. If we were running away, would we camp out right in the open? Shut up. Rebel, that's enough. How would you feel if it was your brother and best friend they shot? Same way you feel, probably. I might even make the same mistake I don't want you to make. What mistake? If anything happens to them, if they don't get back to Virginia City alive, you're going to be held responsible. That's something you're going to have to live with the rest of your life. All right, you made your point. Get those saddles up on the horses. <laughs> spot as any. We'll camp here for the night. I can use some of that. Could you? Get off those horses. Here you go. Have some mine. Thanks. What do you think would have happened if my brother had asked them for water? What's that got to do with this? I'll tell you what would have happened. They would have put another bullet in them. That's what would have happened. It's men like you who make killers like them. We don't even know they're guilty yet. They've been in trouble before. They've been caught before. Now, how do you know that? I know. All I have to do is look at them. Well, you got better eyes than I have. All I see are two men who are getting a little nervous looking down the barrel of your shotgun. If you were sitting where they were, you'd be nervous too. a little, huh? Well, you better get used to it, because it's going to bite a lot more before morning. Getting him ready for the night. Any objections? We just figured we'd feed him first, that's all. You think I care anything about that? I know you don't care, but I do. They're our prisoners, but they're human beings, and we're going to feed them. I said we're going to feed him. All right, feed him. But if they make a break, you better not get in the way. Or I might have to take three of you instead of two. Want some more. Plenty more in the saddlebag. Don't worry, we ain't gonna try anything. That shotgun looking at us, I ain't even sure I wanna eat. You better eat, it's a long way to Red Creek. There's a slim chance of getting there.
friendly cuss, isn't he? He's acting like you're the killer instead of them two. Yeah, that's what keeps going through my mind. Well, he's young. I used to be the same as Cartwright. But when you've seen as much as I have, well, you change. I don't quite follow you. There hasn't been a killer born that doesn't start yelling he's innocent once he's caught. Just like those two are doing. All they're waiting for is a chance to kill again and get away. I believe it. Yeah, but what keeps itching at me is we didn't find the gold. That's an old trick. They hide what they steal. And when they get to court, a smart lawyer uses their empty pockets as proof of innocence. I never thought of that. And the jury turns them loose. They pick up the loot they hid and ride out of the country, free and rich. You know what those two have done. You gonna take them all the way to Virginia City and see them go free? I sure don't want to. Well, me neither. But I don't hold with no lynching. Nobody said anything about lynching. But I can't help wishing they'd sure try to get away. Yeah, that would make a difference. It sure would. Self-defense. Just protecting our own lives. That's the way I see it. Self-defense. Give me the place. All right, you had your meal. They can't sleep that way. You don't like the way I'm treating the prisoners? You put them to bed. Here, lie back. Get you around the tree. I'll take over watch. Cartwright said he'd see that we stand trial. Do you think he can do it? I keep hoping. But then I see that Rimbo looking at us, and I don't know. Man never knows what he's going to wake up to. Last evening, all I was worried about was where my next meal was coming from. Yeah, no, I'm just wondering if I'm going to live long enough to have another meal. Sorry for yourselves, huh? It never fails. As soon as one of your kind gets caught, they start feeling real sorry for themselves. Mr. Rimbo, we didn't shoot your brother. We didn't shoot anybody. I know better. I swear I'm telling you the truth. He ain't interested in the truth. All he wants to do is see us dead. <laughs> Mister, I never wanted anything more in my whole life. Don't you forget it.
kill us tomorrow for sure. At least we can try. Killers, go ahead and run. Go on, run. and slow. Easy. Toss it over here. As of now, I run this posse. Sit down. Siding with murderers, taking my posse. You're only giving them room for more killing. Ridley had you going his way, didn't he? You were just gonna stand by and watch him commit murder. He tried to escape. How'd you get the cuffs off? Rimbo dropped the keys. What difference does it make? They were still trying to escape. It makes a big difference if you drop those keys on purpose. And we came out here to find and bring in two men. Two men who may or may not be guilty. May or may not be guilty. The description fits them to a T. We tracked them all the way from Red Creek. Right on both counts, but there's still a lot of things that don't add up. First of all, they were in no hurry, no hurry at all. Didn't bother to hide their tracks. They camped right out in the open. Now, if I just left a robbery and murder behind me, I'd ride hard and fast. I'd make sure I hid my tracks in my camp. I told you they didn't know they were being followed. If they didn't think they were being followed, why'd they bother hiding the gold? What about when we found them in their camp? They were all but out of food and shells. Now, there was plenty of both back in Red Creek Station. If they robbed it, why didn't they take it with them? Somebody probably spooked them and they ran. We don't know that. And that's not for us to decide. That's for a court of law. See, Mr. Rimbo here, he doesn't want him to get there. He doesn't want him to have that trial. Because he's only had one idea from the moment we started this posse. And that's to see them dead. Yes, he said he hoped they'd try to get away so he could use that shotgun. You know, I guess you're right. He almost had us talked into seeing it his way. And how do you see it now? I see it like you do. 
Our job is to take him in and hand him over to the law. That's all I wanted to hear. All right, take the prisoners in. But before you do, there's something I want to say to them. I want you to hear it, too. Because you're right. I did want them dead. I still do. So you're going to get that trial. And when it's over, you're going to look out of your cell window and watch the gallows being built. You're going to watch them test the trap and stretch the rope. You're going to count the days, the hours, and the minutes until that rope is around your necks. And you're going to wish a thousand times that Cartwright had let me do it my way. doctor got here, there wasn't much he could do. There was no pain. He just drifted off into a deeper and deeper sleep. Did he, did he say anything about what happened? Anything at all? Never opened his eyes after he left. I know it don't do much good to say things at a time like this, but I'm terribly sorry. We did everything we could. I guess I knew there wasn't any hope. Thanks. Sorry about your brother. Yeah. Yeah. You know, all the time I've been a law officer, that was the first time that anyone ever took my guns away from me. Cartwright. When we get back to Virginia City, I'm going to have you arrested. For interfering with a lawman in the performance of his duty. And you too, Mr. Willow. And you, Mr. Mapes, you're going to be arrested too. You're just trying to stop me from killing two men, that's all. Trying to stop me from killing them. I say I was just trying to prevent two prisoners from escaping. An escape that you arranged. You put a knife to my throat to convince us we had to run or die. Then you dropped those handcuffed keys on purpose. Well, now, just a minute. Did you see me do anything like that, Mr. Mapes? Can't say that I did. And you, Mr. Willow? Well, I was asleep most of the time, but... Mr. Willow, you'll be testifying under oath. Now, did you see me threaten the prisoners with a knife, yes or no? No, I didn't. I dropped those handcuff keys by accident, and you can't prove otherwise. Your brother's been siding with two cold-blooded murderers. I don't know what happened out there on the trail, but I know if little Joe went against the lawman, it was only because he thought he had to. Well, it isn't what he thought, but what he did that counts. You all heard my brother's statement describing the murderers? You heard it, and you heard it, and you... and you. And you'll all have to testify to that in court. 
Well, I'll testify to that, Mr. Rimbo. But I'm also going to testify to the other evidence. They weren't trying to cover up their tracks. And they were camping out in the open. And they didn't have the gold. Look, we all understand how you feel about your brother. Nobody's trying to protect the prisoners. We just want to see him come to trial, that's all. We want to make sure these are the men that are guilty. Oh, you want proof beyond a reasonable doubt, as they call it. Right. Well, with your permission, I'll get you that proof. All right, you two. Over by the door. You're going to tell us and show us exactly what happened when you were here before. Step by step. I came in this door. All right, you came in the door. Then what? There was a man over there by the counter. Show me. Over here, back of the counter. Well, which man? What did he look like? He looked... He was, uh, had gray hair, lean, kind of old. Tom Delaney, station master. Well, then what? We passed the time of day. We told him uh, we were looking for work. We were hungry. We could use a meal, but we didn't have any money to pay. He said he never turned a hungry man away from his door in his life. He said, sit down. He sat over there? Yeah. Well, show me. Right here. Then what? He'd give us a meal. Hot cakes, bacon, coffee. That's when the other man came in while we were eating. Younger fella. The old man called him Jack. That's right. They both went over to the ticket counter. Then what did you do? Nothing. We could have used some more hot cakes, but they were busy, so we just said thanks and we rode out. Just where did you say thanks? Don't point. Show me. About over here, I guess. The old man was sitting at the desk. The other one was by the ticket counter. You saw the safe and decided to rob it. My brother was at the ticket counter. You shot him first. Tom was sitting at the desk. He was getting up when your bullet hit him in the back. You're a liar. Wait a minute. How'd they get the safe open? With $15,000 in gold in here, they're sure not going to leave it open. Somebody knew the combination. That's right. Tom did. They forced him to open it and then shot him. That's not what your brother said. He said they walked in here, asked for some food, and started shooting. Well, maybe my brother made a mistake. In his condition, maybe he was wrong. In his condition, he could have been wrong about identifying those two men. But like you say, we'll let the court decide. We've got the gun that killed him. That's good enough for me. Maybe that's where I ought to get into this conversation. What caliber was that gun? 44. Well, sir, here's a slug that the doctor got out of that brother of yours. Somewhat smaller than a 44. Looks more like a 25, maybe out of a Derringer. Which one of you two had a Derringer? Mister, I've seen a Derringer in my life, but I sure never owned one. Well, one of you did. You shot him and then threw it away. We never did. Neither one of us. That's a dirty lie. Leave what did you do with it? Hey, 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 Rimbo, Rimbo, oh, leave him alone. I'm Rimbo. sick of their lying. Sick of listening to them. So, you never had a Derringer, huh? It's Tom Delaney's gun. He's got his initials on it. Killed Tom, then took his gun and shot my brother. Then he hid it under the counter? That doesn't make much sense. Well, hid it or kicked it under, what difference does it make? They were through with it. I think we ought to take a look in the barn. In the barn? For what? Looks like we found a gun that we didn't know was here. Can't hurt nothing to look around. Your brother was shot in the lung right here in the office. Yet he crawled out to the barn. Why? Maybe he was afraid these two killers would come back. All we're looking for is the truth. That's what you want, isn't it? Whatever we find will only help prove it, so what are your objections? All right.
right, I have no objections. Let's look in the barn. But somebody better stay with these two. Go we'll watch them. Go ahead. What do you expect to find? I think you know. You trying to pull my brother into this? We know your brother was shot with Delaney's Derringer. We don't know who pulled the trigger or when it was pulled. One of those killers pulled it. Why? They had their own guns. Those drifters could be telling the truth. Delaney and your brother could have been alive when they left here. You're saying my brother killed Tom and then robbed the safe, is that it? I'm saying it could have happened that way. We do know he came over here. Now, if he robbed the safe, maybe he came here to hide the gold. Well, he didn't kill Tom and he didn't rob the safe. Oh, then you shouldn't mind us looking around. All it'll do is prove your brother's innocence. Go ahead, look around, tear the place apart. Why didn't you look in the loft? Maybe he hid it up there. You know, your brother was in no shape to get in the loft. Mr. Rimbo know where to find it. You said Tom Delaney was your best friend, didn't you? So you let your brother shoot him in the back. Shut up and get over there. Go on, move. Now turn around and face the wall. Drop it, Rimbo. Willow! We owe you two an apology. Thanks for believing us. No need for thanks. Get your guns, you can leave any time you want. There's one thing I want to know. Why? A respected lawman, why did you suddenly turn thief and killer? You wouldn't understand. Nobody would. Was riding shotgun, protecting other people's money, never having any of my own. But the way we planned this, nobody was supposed to get killed. Nobody. Just before we would arrive on the stage, my brother was going to knock Tom out, take the gold out of the safe and hide it. And then he was going to cut his head and say he'd been knocked out too. And then he was supposed to track the would-be thief, huh? I was supposed to go out and come back and say I'd lost the tracks. But everything went wrong. Yeah, it all went wrong, including you and your brother.
There's one thing I can guarantee you, Rimbo. You're gonna get a trial. Age is coming in. Sure don't envy you this trip. Well, something has to be done. We know that. Now, Joe, if it's just hard times, you tell Tom and Ellie to come right back here. There's always a place for them in the Ponderosa. All right. I hope that's all it is, just hard times. Yeah. I'll be seeing you. Have a good time. Right. Jensen, veterinarian. At your service. Stable your horse, cure him if he's sick, or rent you one. What'll it be? See, as I just got off the stage, coach, how about rent me one? Mister, where do you plan to go with that horse? You kind of sneak up on a man, Sheriff. I asked you a question. Where do you plan to go with that horse? He's gonna ride out and see a couple old friends of mine. I'd like to talk to you first. Sure, go ahead, talk. At my office. Over there. Down ordinance. What's this all about? It's about a bank robbery and a murder. Let's go. They shall have to hold up on that horse. Starters, where are you from? Virginia City. Did you stop over in Tucson very long? Just long enough for the stage to change horses. Put your bag up here. Oh, come on, Sheriff. All I got in the bag is some clothes. Put it up here. Now open it.
What are you doing in Amado? Yeah, well, this is the United States territory, isn't it? I already told you, I'm here to visit some old friends. Those friends got a name? Yeah, they got a name. Tom and Ellie Blackwell, you know? I know them. Never mentioned they expected anybody. Maybe that's because they mind their own business. Mind if I shut the bag? They didn't even know I was coming. That's why they didn't mention it. Now, is there any chance of you telling me where the place is? Sure. It's about six miles due east of here. Well, thank you very much. Now, if I could have my gun, I'd like to go to the hotel, check in, get a room. That is, if you're through with me. I'm not quite through. I think I'll drive you out to the Blackwells myself. I wouldn't want you to get lost. Benji, what are you up to now? I'm getting a drink. Well, make sure you don't spill any of it. I won't. I think your father's back. It's not our wagon. It's Sheriff King. Who's the other man? But I'm not sure. Joe hey, Ellie! Joe Kurtz! Oh. oh, it's good to see you. Oh, what are you doing way down here? I thought I'd just drop by. Hey, and this has got to be Benji! Your father's name, say. Hey, you're a big boy. I just can't believe you're here. I guess you two know each other. For about a million years, it seems. Mama, how does a man know my name? Because he's a very old, very dear friend. Say hello to Mr. Cartwright. Hello, Mr. Cartwright. <laughs> <laughs> I think you better call me Joe, Benji. Sure, Joe. <laughs> oh, just look at me if I'd had any idea oh, you, you were stop coming. stop worrying? Oh, it's good to see you. Didn't you catch some robbers yet, Sheriff King? Well, uh, no, no, I haven't, Benji, but uh, I'm working on it. You see, Mr. Cartwright, the, the Hollister gang robbed the bank in Tucson three days ago. They... Killed the cashier and the sheriff. They're supposed to have headed this way. And, well, you sort of fitted the description of one of them robbers. Well, anyways, we don't get many strangers in our town. Sheriff, you didn't think that Joe here was one of the robbers, did you? Well, Ellie, I didn't know him, and I wasn't sure you knew him until I brought him out here. I'm glad to know you, Mr. Cartwright. Glad to know you, Sheriff. I guess I can trust you with this now. No hard feelings, I hope. No hard feelings. Where are my manners? Come on in out of this hot sun, Ellie, both of Ellie, you. thanks, but I gotta get out. Is Tom back yet? No, he's uh, still in Nogales, looking for work. Well, the water wagons ought to be back from Indian Springs by tomorrow. I'll fetch some out to you. I sure would appreciate it, Sheriff. We're just about out. Is Joe gonna stay with us? Of course he is. No, of course I am not. I'm gonna go in town with the Sheriff and get a room and come back I and I will not hear of it. You're gonna stay right here. Can't argue with a lady. I'll get my bag. <laughs> There you are, son. I have to wait till the sheriff brings the water out before I can wash these up. Things been going pretty rough, huh? No drought. No crops. I never wanted you to see me like this. Can't even serve you a decent meal. Dinner was fine. Ellie, if things were going so bad, why didn't you let us know? You know we would have helped you. Didn't want to ask for any charity. Oh, now, come on. We've been friends too long for that kind of talk. Well, I was afraid maybe... Maybe Tom wouldn't like it. Ellie, I know it's none of my business, but is there anything wrong between you and Tom? No. Of course not. Come on, you can do this work later. Sit down for a while. You know, I read that letter you wrote to Pa. I never meant for you and Hoss to read that. I never should have written it. Oh, I was... I was I was alone here, and things were going badly, and... Well, I was just feeling low, that's all. I didn't expect you to come all the way down here. Oh, I guess I... I just wanted your Pa's shoulder to cry on. The way I used to, remember? Yeah, I remember. You were always one of the family. I know. I'll never forget what your father did for Tom. Getting him out of all that trouble and into the army was the best thing ever happened to him. 
Yeah, I heard he won a lot of medals. Oh, he was so proud when he got out. Maybe too proud. Joe, he's tried so hard here. But he, he's done his best with his place, and it's not his fault things haven't turned out well. How long has he been down there, Gallus? This time? Mm -hmm. Five, six days. He'll be around home for a while, and then it seems like he just can't stand seeing the way things are, and, and he has to get away. Well, you're gonna have to try and understand him. It's, well, it's something that happens to men sometimes when they, they can't do the kind of things they'd like to do for their families. I don't want you to worry about it. When he comes back, I'll have a talk with him. You know, we got a lot of good farmland on the Ponderosa just waiting for a plow to dig into it. Now, Joe, now, now I don't didn't... don't give me any of that charity nonsense or I'll put you over my knee. <laughs> <laughs> Excuse me, Joe. I'll just be a minute. It's just an old Indian that comes by here. Indian Pete. He comes by for table scraps. I guess no matter how badly off you are, there's always somebody has it worse. You know, that's a good thing to remember. You sounded just like your father when you said that. <laughs> you must be dead tired after that long, hot trip. As a matter of fact, I am. Oh, come on. I'll show you to your room. We'll have plenty of time for talking tomorrow. This is nice. I sure hope I'm not putting you out too much. Of course not. Anyway, the room's not even being used. I always have Benji sleep in my room when Tom's away. I know it sounds silly, but I get a little scared being way out here all alone. Doesn't sound silly at all. Good night. Good night, Joe. That's a fine way to greet an old friend. How you doing? All right, Blackwell. Well, you said hello, now step aside. I thought you said only your wife and kid was here. I didn't know he was here. I swear I didn't. Rita. Rita, get in here! Go find his gun. And check those rooms. Tom, what is it? What's happening? Well, they stopped me on the road. And they promised not to hurt anybody. Now, please, just, just do as they say. You better start talking, Blackwell. Who is he? His name's Cartwright. I didn't know anything about him coming here. He's telling you the truth. I got here late this afternoon. You picked a fine time. Well, you're here now. But so am I. You see this? Yeah, I see that. What's the setup, Rita? The other room's empty. The kids are sleeping in this one. Now, you listen to me. My father's outside. We're gonna bring him in. He's hurt bad, so I ain't gonna worry about anybody else. Anybody gets smart, I'll kill him. And that goes for you, lady. And the kid. You two, now get out. It's 
It's all right, Pa. You rest now. I'll be here with you. You're a good son, Wade. You and me and Rita. We gotta make it. We'll make it all right. You just hang on. I need a doctor, son. I'm hurting bad. When we get to Mexico, we'll get you one. A real good one. Yeah. Sure you will, son. He looks real bad. That wound's got to be cleaned. You boil some water. What's the matter with you? Don't you hear so good? There isn't any water. If you don't believe it, look for yourself. Where's your well? It's been bone dry for a year. We've had drought for the last three. You see a crop within 50 miles of here? You get water someplace. Hey, don't worry, there'll be some water here tomorrow. The sheriff's gonna bring some out. Are you getting smart with me? Well, you don't believe much of anybody tells you, do you? Why would a sheriff deliver water? He does it to help Ellie out when I'm gone, that's all. We don't want no sheriff snooping around here. Let's get out of here, Wade. Sounds like pretty good advice, Alistair. Shut up. Go on out there and bring our saddlebags and canteens in here. If you, know, you plan on staying around here for a while, you better figure on uh, how you're going to stop that sheriff. He shows up around here, he'll get his head blowed off. Wade, you promised there wouldn't be any shooting. My wife and boy are here. So's Cartwright. That changes things. Look, the, uh, the sheriff wouldn't think anything about it if I went after the water in the morning. Hmm? That sounds to me like a smart way out. How come you're getting so helpful of a sudden, Cartwright? I'm just trying to stop some innocent people from getting killed, that's all. You better start worrying about keeping yourself from getting killed. It's a good idea we'll try it. <laughs> you got all that choice. You're just itching to have your head split open, ain't you? I said we'll try it. Now, the both of you sit over there against the wall and face it. Well, come on, hurry up. Get in there with your kid. If he wakes up, keep him quiet. And keep the door open. Take care of Pa. Fix him some soup. We gotta get some food in him. I want you to take over. I gotta get a couple hours of shut-eye. What about me, Wade? I haven't had any sleep in three days. Well, you do as I say. Ain't I got enough troubles? Don't yell! And do like I tell you! These are getting kind of cramped. You mind if I turn around and stretch a minute? Go ahead. Just don't stand up. Couldn't think of it. Yeah, that's a lot better. Thank you. Don't mean you're going to get any special privileges. No, I suppose it doesn't. What are you staring at? Just you. I was just thinking, put a, put a dress on you, fix you up a little bit, you'd be a good-looking girl. Without the gun in your hand, of course. <laughs> just don't you forget I got this gun. Tell me, what's it all get you? All the what? Oh, the killing, the robbing, running from the law. What for? I have good times. Lots of them. Yeah, I can see that. Yeah, having Wade order you around, have you doing his chores while, while he gets his rest. Wade and O'Neill and me, we understand each other. 
Oh, you're a big happy family. Yeah. You can put it like that if you want to. How's it all wind up? I know how it's going to wind up. We're getting out of here. We're going to Mexico, and Wade and me are going to get married. In a real church. And I'm going to have the finest... What do you care? I really don't care, Rita. That's a sad part of it. I don't think anybody else does either. You've stretched long enough. Turn around and face the wall. I said turn around and face the wall! That's very good. Now you can start loading the barrels. Cartwright, right, you can... Wait a minute! Rita! Yeah? What do you want? Get in here! What do you want? Keep an eye on Cartwright. I thought nobody passed here. Well, nobody does. We're a half a mile off the road. Then who is that? Uh, it's only Indian Pete. What's he doing here? Ali stops by all the time, hoping for food scraps so he can feed us all a score. He can't do no harm. How do you know he'll keep his mouth shut? He can't even talk, Wade. His tribe cut his tongue out when he wanted to make peace during the Apache War. All right. Just get rid of him. That blasted Indian go away. All right. Cartwright, help him load the barrels. Remember, if you're not back here in a couple hours, somebody's going to get hurt. Well, the water may not be there yet. They have to haul it in from Indian Springs. I don't know if those wagons will be on schedule. Well, for your sake, they better be on schedule. What were you two gabbing about out there? Told them to do what you said, that's all. If you're lying, I'll find out about it. Rita? Keep an eye on Cartwright. I want to check on Paul. Into the kitchen, Cartwright. He's getting worse. He needs a doctor. He's right, son. As soon as that wagon gets back, we're gonna start packing the move. This ain't no way for a man to die. You ain't gonna die, Pa. I promise you that. We've been in tighter fixes than this before when we got out. You're a good boy, Wade. I raised you good. You sure did. You just rest a while, Pa. I'll fix you some hot soup.
There's some stuff in those saddlebags. Get it out and cook it. Use the water in the canteens. Mommy. I'm hungry, Mommy. Go on, get in there and take care of the kid. Let her do it. She's his mother. I'll cook the grub. I'm sick of you cooking. Now get in there and take care of the kid like I told you. Just one big happy family. I told you to get the grub. I wish Tom would hurry up and get back. I'm getting worried. You're gonna have reason to worry if he don't show up soon. Don't worry, he'll be back. Hey, Tom! How'd you get back? You got in last night. Did you, uh, have any luck finding work? No, not much. Well, I better be getting on back, Doc. We're out of water. Yeah. Sure has been rough on all of us. Oh, uh, say, Tom, I got a load of hay coming in. Might be a couple days' work for you. I sure would appreciate that, Doc. Times like these, we all gotta stick together, Tom. Yeah, we sure do. Thanks a lot, Doc. Send out Cartwright to help you. All right, Cartwright, get out there and help him unload. Mommy! Mommy! Shut that kid up, will you, Rita? Mommy! Can't I go to him? Rita, did you hear me? No, I told you I wouldn't risk my family. Hurry it up, you two. supposed to know that was part of our deal. Now get out there and unload those barrels. You take a good look at her, Tom. She was so proud of you. still. With a mighty hand, the giant grabbed Jack by the seat of the pants. By the seat of the britches. Oh, yeah. Wait, that what I said? You said pants. Oh. But Jack managed to wriggle away and reach the beanstalk just in time. He fell, he fell rather than climbed down its long green stalk. And landed with a bounce in its mother's garden. Oh. Say, you're a smart kid, ain't you? <laughs> He's 
hotter than a desert rock. It looks badly infected. He must have a doctor. He'll get one. As soon as we get across the border, the best money can buy. Ma'am, I uh, want to thank you. I appreciate it. I'd do the same for any sick animal. Worse. We'll get out of here, Ellie. We'll make it to Mexico. You and me and the boy. Will we, Tom? Sure we will. There's a lot of money in there. Part of it belongs to us. Stolen money. I'd rather Benji and I were both dead than to go with you now. Ellie. You don't mean that. I mean it, Tom. Oh, don't you see what a fool you were? You threw away every chance you had just because you were too weak to swallow your stupid pride. Weak? Yes, weak! Well, it's easy for you to talk. You didn't scratch on his dirt like I did. Don't you think a man wants things decent for his wife and son? Decent? What do you call decent? You call murder decent? Yes. If that's the only way I could get them the things I wanted them to have. You mean the things you always wanted. I already had what I wanted. You. But you wouldn't even understand that. Quit your arguing in here. You make my pa nervous. We? Where are you, son? Right here, Paul. What was all that arguing about out there? Cartwright and Blackwell, they're beginning to make me real sick, Paul. Ain't nothing wrong, is there? We're going to get to Mexico all right, ain't we? Sure we are. Is the money safe? It sure is. I gotta have that money, son. I'm getting old. This was supposed to be my last job. I spent free all my life, and I, I need that money. You're gonna get your money. You say that, but I don't know... Ever since you met up with that girl, things ain't been the same. We was close, you and me, and, and now it's her. Well, she ain't gonna make no difference between you and me, Pa. I'm your son. Well, we got to get out of here, Wade. Sure, Pa. Wade, here, quick. Sheriff King, from town. I'll go on out and get rid of him. Howdy, Tom. Doc Jensen said you was back. Howdy, Sheriff. I <sighs> sure hot one hit. Uh huh. Mind if I set a spell? You, get in the bedroom with your kid. Rita, you stay in there with her. On the floor, face down. What was yesterday? You find any work, Tom? No. The way I figured, them outlaws are still around here someplace. Well, I doubt it, Sheriff. What makes you think so? Been watching the border. They ain't crossed. The way I see it, that one they wounded was so bad they had to go to ground. 
Well, there hasn't been anybody come by here. You keep your eyes open. I'm making up a posse, Tom. I'd like you to join us, but I think it's better if you stay here and protect your family. I bet Ellie was glad to see you back. Yes, she was. I sure want to thank you for hauling water to her. I no, don't mention it. She around? Oh, she's uh, taking a nap with Benji. Yeah. Well, this hot weather sure does make you sleepy. <laughs> no doubt about that. You tell your uh, your friend Cartwright that I'd like him to join us, if he's a mind too. All right, Sheriff. I will. Sure got a Gabby Sheriff. Took his time, didn't he? Wait, he's raising a posse. You know, they think we're still around. Oh, I know, I heard. Well, what are we gonna do? Well, I don't know about you, but Rita, Paul, and me are getting out of here tonight. What do you mean you don't know about me? What about my share of the money? What share? Wade, you promised. Now, you ain't bucking out on me now. Ain't I? You know, Blackwell, you've been in a lot of trouble to me. You ain't getting no share. So what do you plan to do about that? I said you ain't backing out on me. Now put that away, Blackwell. Rita! Don't try anything, Blackwell. I sure picked the wrong one when I picked you, didn't I? Oh, you picked some nice friends, Tom. Some real nice friends. Pa, you can mug a mattress out for me and tote some water for the horses. Rita, why don't you start packing the grub and fill the canteen? Uh, Wait. Uh, Watch them. Pa. Pa, uh, it's Wade. Mrs. Blackwell! Get in here, quick! You must have fallen out of bed. Oh, here, let me help you. Pa? Uh. Paul, can you hear me? His wound's broken open. He has to have help or he'll bleed to death. You stay here with him. Do what you can. He's in a bad way. We gotta get a doctor. Wade, we can't take a chance. He's dying. We gotta take a chance. Wade. What do you want? I'll make a deal with you. I'm the only one who can go to town for the doctor. Just promise me that Ellie and Benji will be all right. Oh, you think I'd trust you now? You'd come back here with a sheriff. No, I wouldn't, Wade. I'd just let Ellie and Benji and Cartwright go. Stop begging him. He's not gonna listen to you. Besides, he just soon let his old man die anyway. I want to split your head open, Cartwright. Wade, I won't double-cross you. I'm the only one you can send. Now, there's somebody else. What about the Indian, the one that comes by every night for scraps? What about him? Yeah, what about that old Indian? Blackwell says he can't even talk. He can pack a note, can he? Are you trying to pull something, Cartwright? Look, you can't trust Tom. It's either the Indian or you'll let your old man die. That's up to you. All he has to do is bring a note into Doc Jensen. Doc Jensen? That's right, Doc Jensen. I met him when I was in town. He said he was a good friend of yours. Oh, yeah. Yeah, that's right. Are you sure that Indian will come by? Oh, he'll come by. He hasn't missed in three years. All right, I'm going to risk it. 
Get a piece of paper and a pencil and then write what I tell you. Might not be a bad idea to tell him your little boy's sick. That ought to bring him. That'll get him here real quick. Start writing, Blackwell. Tom, I got you. Nice and easy, Doc. Tom, what's this all about? I couldn't help myself, Doc. Search him, Rita. Ellie, what's going on? Do what he says, Doc. Please. Bag two. Just doctor stuff. You're going to treat a man for gunshot, Doc. And he better live. Can't do it without my instruments. Give me the bag. And watch that. Into the bedroom, Doc. Take care of your kid. He's in bad shape. I know that. Just get busy. Well, the doc was right. There's something wrong in there. He's had plenty of time to let us know if it was all right. Wade? What? I think there's somebody out there. There's no doubt about it now. No, don't fire. Ellie and the boy are still in there. Just keep working. Cover the back. Who are they? How'd they get here? The doctor brought them, honey. It looks like the joke's on you, Hollister. See the man in there with your father? That's a horse doctor. Why, you... <laughs> Feet. Tom? There's another one in the bedroom. He won't give you any trouble. I only 
they did it for you and Benji. I know. Good to see you, Ben. Good to see you. Is that sure is? Well, this must be Benji. Howdy, Benji. Somebody at the ranch just waiting to meet you. His name is Hop Singh, and he makes the best pumpkin pie there is. And he's made something special for you. Yes, sir, he's made some dumplings and fried chicken. I like fried chicken. How about you? I like fried chicken, too. Charlie, get those bags down here. We're going home. and comb behind every rock. He's got a bullet in him. He can't be too far. And remember, a rat is dangerous when he's cornered. I know how to deal with rats. I'll drag him in on the end of this. Hartley, I'm going to tell you once more, this is a posse, not a lynch mob. This is a band of madmen we've been chasing. They've killed, pillaged, burned me out. They killed my wife. Cap Fenner and his band are going to get no better from us than, than they've been given. And you can call this a posse if you want to, but we're going to shoot on sight and we're going to shoot to kill. I just hope that old friends don't try to get in the way. I don't like it, Ben. I just hope that none of them find that wounded man for we do. comb behind every rock. He's got a bullet in him. He can't be too far. And remember, 
A rat is dangerous when he's cornered. I know how to deal with rats. I'll drag him in on the end of this. Hartley, I'm going to tell you once more, this is a posse, not a lynch mob. And this is a band of madmen we've been chasing. They've killed, pillaged, burned me out. They killed my wife. Cap Fenner and his band are going to get no better from us than, than they've been given. And you can call this a posse if you want to, but we're going to shoot on sight and we're going to shoot to kill. I just hope that, that old friends don't try to get in the way. It, ben. I just hope that none of them find that wounded man for we do. I'll catch up with the others. Panas Camacheros, he's the one who had the money. I'll saddle a horse and take him into town. No, 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 he stays here. I want you to go to town and tell Roy Coffey to bring the doctor out here. Tell him to come out pronto. Make sure you don't tell anybody about this except Roy, you understand? I know, wait a minute, what's this all about? Now, just do as I tell you, I don't want to argue about it, Joe. Look, you don't want to argue about it, but I do. And we both knew Jim Hartley's wife. I got a friend right now in town with a bullet in him. Maybe dying, you're worried about taking Joseph, care of I this? Joseph, I just told you to do something. Get into town, tell Roy to bring the doctor out here. Do you understand? Now move! Mosquito, I ought to yank you off that horse and beat your head against a rock. How'd you let him get away from you? They shot Amigo's horse out from under him and put a bullet in him. He was dragging himself along the ground. Yeah, dragging the money with him, too. I'll track him, Captain. I don't care what happens to that <laughs> dirty peon. I just want to know where the money is. I'll find out, Captain, and I promise you that. I don't want your promises. I want the money. And don't bother to get back here until you find out where it is. Understand? Yes, sir. Now ride. <laughs> I'm in pretty bad shape, but I've done all I can do for now. I still don't like covering up this sort of thing. You'd rather see that posse bring him in face down over his saddle with That's you. your responsibility. Look, Doc, all Roy's trying to do is buy time for the mob to cool down. Well, I hope you're right. But I won't guarantee how the voters will react when they find out about it, or for that matter, some of my patients when they find out. You try moving him out of here, you'll find out that some of your patients and some of your voters may get killed. Doc, is it all right if I talk to him now? Go ahead. It's all right with me. What's your name, son? 
Hey, what's your name? Why do you waste time? Why don't you kill me? Ain't nobody gonna kill you, boy. Now just tell me what your name is. They call me Amigo. What are you going to do with me, Sheriff? Well, that'll be up to the court to decide. <laughs> the court? I'm a Mexican. Yaki Indian. What court is there for me? Well, let me just say this. If you tell us where Cap Fenn and the rest of his men are, it'd be a mighty big help to you. I do not turn on my friends, senor. You're wasting your time, Roy. Men, regardless of what I think of him, he's still a patient. I've got to get some food into him. I'll get up soon. I'll be right down, Ben. Now you think over what I told you here. Then I shouldn't risk taking this money out of town. Would you keep it in that safe of yours for me for a couple of days? Yeah, I don't see why not. Yeah, I handcuffed the kid to the bed upstairs. There's the keys. How's your friend? He's badly hurt, but he'll pull through. Good, just so he lives long enough to hang. You're beginning to sound as bloodthirsty as Hartley. Or maybe that's because I feel the same way Hartley does. Do you mean that you'd turn that boy over to a lynch mob? Yeah, why not? Why not, Roy? It'll save us the bother of a trial. The verdict's already in. The man rode with Cap Fenner. He was involved in the killing of Hartley's wife. And the shooting of Jack Marshall and robbery. What more do you want? Look, nobody questions the fact that it deserves a hanging. But if a man is hanged without the benefit of a trial, whoever puts the rope around his neck is guilty of murder. I say, give him what he deserves. I don't care what the man deserves. We're not talking about that. It's still murder. If you want to put a rope around his neck, go ahead. If you want to live with a murder on your conscience for the rest of your life, fine. Go right ahead. Look, Joe. Take some food up to him, will you? And stand guard. Uh, cook made you some soup. How is it you bring it? You who hate me. My boss said, bring it, so I bring it. Hey. I heard what you said about me downstairs. Well, then you also heard a good friend of mine got shot in that holdup. Now, just how do you think I ought to feel about you? I did not shoot him. Yeah, I figured you'd say that. My people say the son is in the father's image. Sometimes nature makes mistakes. You have a good father. And this is a fine house. Uh, like those of the hacendados in my country. Only there I slept in the stables. With the animal. Where you would have me now or on the filthy floor of the local calabozo, staring through the bars at the gallows. You're here, aren't you? I am here, see. But not because of you. I know you, young senorito. Come on, come on, take it easy. Just make the arm We Well, I'll be careful. Animals like me can bite. That is what you think. I'm a dirty Mexican animal. Do you ever stop to think maybe that's the way you want me to see you? <laughs> well, how can I be otherwise? You are the young patron. 
And I, I have known hunger and cold. I've been whipped in jail. I have become a thief and a murderer, just as you say. Oh, you really bleed, don't you? Now, you really bleed, not just from your arm. <sighs> what do you think? You're the only man who's ever had hard times, the only one who's ever known hunger and cold? Now, I got news for you, friend. I've known a lot of men like that. But they didn't join up with a killer like Cap Fenner. Perhaps there was a... If there was no place else to go. Joe Benton's ranch here last night. Burned a house and a barn right down to the ground. Now, where were you? I was chasing Fenner. All by yourself, Roy. Now, what are you getting at? I'll tell you what we're getting at. My wife and daughter had to hide in that brush out there for over an hour till Fenner and his cutthroats decided to leave. Then Hartley and the boys and me came up, and my wife and my daughter's hands and arms were burned. We brought her into town to see if Doc could patch her up, but he wasn't here. He was with you. The two of you were seen riding out together. Where'd you go, Roy? Who was Doc patching up? That common sheriff that's got a bullet in him. The one that we couldn't find. You're hiding him, Roy. I'm doing my job. And that's all I'm going to tell you. We'll find out where he went. When we do, we're going to hang that common sheriff. And we're going to come back and talk to you. All right, let's get out of here. Anything any better? Does it matter, senor? Amigo, I'm going to make you one promise. You're going to have a fair trial. Now, I'm... Senor, there's something you can do for me now. Those wild horses you round up for your ranch, they are hard to break, see? Yes, they're hard to break. What about them? What happens when you cannot break one? You shoot him. No, sometimes you shoot him. I prefer to set him free. Senor Cartwright, does a man have no more right than a horse? Has he less right to live and be free, respected? Yes, every man has a right to that. And you can help me, senor. Let me go. That horse hasn't broken the law. You have. Now, I'm not judge and jury. What you're asking me to do is impossible. You are judge and jury here. And you have just condemned me to die. Pa, Hartley and the posse are just riding in. Stay here with them. Yeah. Yeah, you are happy now, senora. We want to talk to you, Ben. All right. I'm listening. Well, it, uh... It seems the sheriff and the doc went riding last night. Well, we did some tracking. We figured that they, uh, they came here. We want to know who's sick in your house, Ben. <laughs> Hartley, I... I don't think I have to account to you for... Who's sick in my house? You don't have to, Ben. 
Or you don't want to. <clears throat> now you have something to say, you go right ahead and say it. Unless I got things to do. Like taking care of a wounded Comanchero, maybe? Sheriff Coffee wants to question me, I'll talk to him. We're gonna look around your place, Ben. Turn me over to them, aren't you? Go on, get out the door. I said, get out the door! You can't stand us all off, Ben. And we're gonna search this place. Starting with that house. Well, I sure wish you wouldn't do that. It's, see, somebody's liable to get hurt. I wouldn't want that to happen. Neither would you. Get a search warrant. I got one right here. I told you about old friends trying to get in the way, Ben. And there's only one of you and a whole lot of us. You better get out of the way. Who's going to get it first, Hartley? Fa. Go on, let them in if that's what they want. Look, I know how you feel about men taking the law in their own hands, but we got nothing to hide. Make up your mind, Ben. All right, let's go. All right, look in there. Still gonna take a look around the barn and the bunkhouse. All right, let's go. What'd you do with them? I kicked them out the back door. You kicked them out the back, just like that? Yeah, just like that. That posse would have killed you to get to him. I didn't figure his life was worth yours. Joe, we're talking about a man's life. We gotta get him back here. I tried, Captain. There were posses everywhere. Twice I almost got shot out of the saddle. But you did find his horse. Sure. Horse was dead. But he could steal another one. I told you to find him. Captain, that amigo ran with the money. Consuelo. Where's my dinner? Coming, Capitan, pronto. I told you not to come back here without him and the money. Captain, there were half a dozen posses around. I could have caught Amigo, but if I tried to catch up with them, they'd have strung us both up. You're a liar, and a fool, and a coward. I make you my lieutenant, because I thought you were less a pig than the rest of them. But you are even more stupid than they are. Captain, it wasn't me that tied the money bag the wrong saddle. There was a day when I had real men in my command. Soldiers. The finest Virginia ever produced. Men who were proud to follow a dream. Men who fought and died well. Even after the dream, they're gone. We too are proud to ride with you, Captain. <laughs> and 
Now, I have the sweepings of the border gutters. The unclean, the filthy, the illiterate. And for a lieutenant, I have a man so stupid, he thinks I do not know a lie when I hear one. Captain, I saw the tracks. I want no tracks. You invented them to cover your mistake. Consuelo. This Consuelo here is Amigo's treasure. He would not run off and leave her. Carson. Yes, Captain. Shoot this fool. It'll be a pleasure. You don't want to kill me, Captain. Captain, you don't mean it. Amigo! 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 Consuelo. Oh, How do you feel? Oh, fine. I... How do you feel? Oh, fine. I... You are wounded. No. It is nothing. I have had a doctor. Estás sí. Amigo. Capitan, I... I got back as quickly as I could. Amigo. Where's the money? I do not know. I was a prisoner there, then there was a sheriff and a doctor. I... Amigo, you say you were a prisoner? Where? Great rancho called De Ponderosa. I've heard of it, Captain. That's the Cartwright spread. It's Cartwright? Is that the man's name who owns the ranch? Say, si, Ben Cartwright. He also has a son named Jose Joseph. Well, Amigo, how did you... How'd you get away? It's Joseph. The posse came to search the house and he pushed me out the back door. Why not give a little surprise party for this Cartwright, eh, Captain? A house burning. Good idea. Por favor, no, Capitan. Senor Cartwright was very kind to me. Had a doctor take care of my arm. He, he gave me food and a clean bed like I have never seen before. before. <laughs> Please don't, don't burn his house. Not getting soft, are you, amigo? No. I do not repay kindness with a torch. Now, amigo, you're going back to the Ponderosa. And you're going to find out where the money is. No, Capitan. They were keeping me for a trial and the gallows. If I go back, I will die. You have my word. They will not take you to trial. But even if I go back, they will not tell me where the money is. You will go back. And you will listen to every word they say. Now, sooner or later, they will talk about the money, who has it, and where it is. When you find out, you drop a white cloth out the window. We'll come for you. Capitan, please don't send my husband back to be killed. Would you come and get her out of here? Oh, my... You make one false move, amigo, and your wife won't live to have that family you're waiting for. Oh, my... Amigo, we have many knives. Now you go back to the Ponderosa and learn where the money is. I will see that your wife is well cared for. That is, unless you fail me. I will not fail you, Capitan. I can't 
understand it. I looked every place, no trail, nothing. He must have gotten up into the rocks. Well, as soon as it's daybreak, we'll try again. Sorry, Bob. Worried about you harboring a criminal, I let one go. Come on, get some sleep. Life is in danger. You hide very well. My arms. May I go to my room? Sorry to disappoint you. Senor. me very much, do you, senor? I don't trust you at all. I came back. Oh, sure, you came back. You got a posse out there waiting to hang you. You know this is the safest place you could be. There are no bars in the windows, but it is still a jail. Soon you will take me to another jail and then to your courts, and after that to the gallows. Oh, come on. Come on, what do you want me to do? Feel sorry for you? You ride with a bunch of killers. You murder. You burn. You're asking for a hanging. What did you expect? When you are hungry, that is bad. But when those you love are hungry, that is worse. I've had too much hunger in my life. And that is why I joined Captain Fenner. He gave me food. So you ride with a killer because he gives you some food? No, and because I have dignity of a job. A job? What, is killing a job? Do you ever think of getting some honest work? If I were to come to your door asking for work, would you have given it to me? You know my father. What do you think? <sighs> a man can stand so much pain. Only for so long can he stand to see pain come to his loved ones. I want a better life for my son. Your son? No, I... If this were to be... If I had a son... You told me your people say that a son is made in his father's image. Let's be thankful you don't have a son. Come on, get the cuffs on. What did you do to your hand? Nothing. And we said. How'd you cut it? On a rock. It looks like it was done with a knife. Did not expect you to believe me. I couldn't believe his story. He told me the other day about cutting his hand. I've seen too many knife wounds. So I figured I'd come back today and have a look around. Now, there's the tracks I followed the other day. They disappear up into the rocks. The tracks of the two horses and the other tracks leading back are fresh. They weren't there the other day. Only one place you could have gone to get a horse. Cap Fenner. Yeah. Cap Fenner. Man. 
men will fan out here. I can move slow and go behind every rock. You been keeping those passes busy, Mosquito? Our band will hit in five places at the same time. All right, that's right. You know the next move, Mosquito. Okay? okay, let's go. Yeah! to fit into a pattern. Then it's Comancheros hitting a dozen different places all at the same time. Sheriff's posse is not able to keep up with any of it. And none of the strikes in this immediate area. Now, what do you think, Captain? Is trying to draw attention away from the ranch? He's an ex-cavalryman. Sporadic raids to draw the strength away from the main targets. An old cavalry trick. <sighs> Amigo must have got the Venice camp. Venice must have sent him back. For a reason. <laughs> you must think that the money's still here. If Fenner and his men hit us, we're gonna need some help. Yeah, we sure are. Haas must have got the herd up to the North Fork's meadow by now. Joe, why don't you ride up there? Tell Haas to leave as many men as you need there to keep the herd from scattering. Get back here as quick as you can. All right. On the way back, I'll stop at the line camps. Get as many men as I can. All right. Keep a good eye on Amigo. I intend to, Joseph. You went up the back way, went up the hill, and you hid there till the posse went away. See, until I was sure they would not come back. Mm -hmm. You know, Joseph went out looking for you. I heard someone. The rabbit who lifts his head to see the hunter often will get a bullet for his trouble. This is not true. You uh, begged me to let you go. And Joseph let you go. And you had a wonderful chance to escape. And you came back. Amigo. I can't help wondering why. Where else could I go, Senor Ben? Who else would give me food and shelter? Now, Joseph went to have another look around after he came back. Found some very interesting tracks. One set of footprints, two sets of hoof prints. Joseph was mistaken. The footprints were leading south. And the hoofprints came up from the south. From the hard rock country. Now, Chef Coffee and I think that Finnis Camp is in that area. I think you know exactly where it is. I think that you went to Finnis Camp when you were gone. Yeah, you have already made your mind up. What can I say? The truth. Just say the truth. Now, Sheriff Coffey told you he'd speak up for you at the trial if you'd help us find and capture Fenner. You asked for mercy. Now, here's your chance to earn it. I heard the horse riding away. Joseph is not here. Have you sent him for help? Why, are we going to need help? Is Fenner going to raid the Ponderosa? I have not seen Capitan Fenner. I was not in the camp. Do not ask me! You're really not a very good liar. <sighs> I was in the camp. Now, where is that camp? Where a man with a knife holds it at the throat of my wife. Even if I tell you where the camp is, it will not help. They're not there now. Where'd they go? To the hills to watch this house. 
I was to find the hiding place of the money and then drop a white cloth from the window. Have they been watching this house ever since you came back? See, if I fail them, the man with the knife will kill Consuelo, my wife, and the child she carries. doing this for me. Get up there and drop that cloth. It is done, Senor Ben. What do we do when Capitan Fenner gets here? I'll give him the money. And you'll all leave. You would do this for me? You will drop your weapon, Mr. Cartwright. I'm Captain John Finner, formerly of the Confederate Army. We captured your son. Oh, he fought well. <laughs> He's a brave lad. But unfortunately, courage does not suffice against a well-set plan. No need to beat him like that. No need. Mr. Cartwright, you're holding certain valuable assets that belong to me. My money, and I want it. You'll have it. But I want your word. And when you get it, you leave here. And no further harm is done, my son. Our amigo's wife. Oh, so you and Mr. Cartwright have been talking, yeah, amigo. Did you also tell him what would happen if you failed to locate the money? Well, no, Capitan. I... It was the only way. All right, Mr. Cartwright, we have a bargain. The woman and your son for the money. Two outside, both of you, in case somebody happens to come in. Yes, Captain. It's all there. All of it. All right, I kept my bargain. You keep yours. Get them out of here. There was nothing said about you, Mr. Cartwright. You're going with us as our hostage. If no one follows, we'll release you eventually. Now, what about you, amigo? Whose man are you? Cartwright's or mine? No. I am your man, Capitan. I made him trust me, so he would tell me where the money is. Well, I swear to you. I give you my word. 
And you have my word, Mr. Cartwright. You wanted your son for the money. And you will get your son. But dead. Carson. Capitan. Let me shoot the young senorito. Shoot him? I thought these people are your, your friends. They are not my friends. He tried to use me. He wanted me to tell him where your camp was. No. In his eyes, I am a stupid Mexican peon. Let me shoot him with his own father's gun. Huh? With his own father's gun? Seguro. Yeah. Miguel. Huh? Yeah, but only one bullet. Just one bullet. Oh, no. Get done with it, amigo. I have seen you do this with other prisoners, Capitan. I wanted to be like you. <laughs> you stupid, illiterate peon, shoot! See me, Capitan. Amigo lived or died. I never thought there was a, a thing about him that was decent. Now, Joe, it's awful easy to see all the wrong things that the other fellow does. It's a whole lot tougher to why he did him. A man can do an awful lot of good with his life. If he has an even chance, Amigo never had that chance. Well, his child will. I'll see to that. We'll see to that.
Good to have you back with us, boys. Monks four and five, same as usual. Name's Monk Slavin. You ever work round up this part of the country before? Lassiter's last year. Well, Lassiter's hiring on men. Why don't you go back there? Well, I had a little trouble. For nothing. Something about cutting up a man, wasn't it? Just an Indian. You better look someplace else. We'll pass. All right, that'll be bunk 14. Hello, Mr. Goliath. Hello, Goliath. How are you? Last Fine. Didn't know that horse of yours was still alive. You uh, want to get on him and find out? <laughs> no, sir, I'll take your word for it. Good to have you back, Goliath. Goliath, you'll be in bunk 15. Hey, where's your teeth? Oh, well. You're out here. How come you don't have men? Well, it gets lonesome on the trail, you know. I gotta have somebody to talk to. <laughs> <laughs> that Goliath. That toothless old cuss will never change, will he? Hey, Dave, good to see you. You'll be in bunk 18. You'll be riding point. Next. Howdy. Had a rough night? Oh, no. I've been treating this cold. Well, I, uh... Sorry, I don't think we can use you this trip. <laughs> Mr. Cartwright, wait a minute. Uh, my name is Wharton. Russ Wharton. I'm Mary Farnham's husband. Mary and me have been traveling back from Oregon. I need, I need this job. Where's Mary? Coming along behind, driving the buckboard. How about it, Mr. Cartwright? I, I really need the job. Cabin for married couples back at the bunkhouse. Thanks. Wharton. I'll be in to see you once you settle in. Tell Mary. Uh, we're beholden to you. Poor little gal. Don't look like she did too well for herself, does it? If the fighting, you're not going to get any work out of him. I just couldn't believe it. Sure is good to have you here. Yeah, sure is. I don't know. I don't know what to say. Well, you, uh, you just don't say anything. Now, Mary, I... Uh, I had come up north, you know, and... When your pa died, but we didn't hear for an awful long time. You know. Nine years ago now, isn't it? Right after I married Russ. I think that that's all that kept Pa alive, was waiting to see me safe. Quite a young woman. Married lady. Mary, yeah. Uh, What happened with the ranch? 
everything was going fine for a while. Russ had things going real good. Everything started to go wrong. Russ is a good, hard worker, Uncle Ben, but even he couldn't cope with it. You can understand that. Of course. But uh, you could have written. I know, but as Pa always said, share your joys, but keep your troubles to yourself. And thank you for taking us in. Now, Mary, you... You don't thank a rancher for taking on extra hands at roundup time. You don't better than that. Would you have hired him... if you hadn't felt sorry for me? Well, uh, Mr. Cartwright. Uh, <laughs> hey, you know, I, I was just looking for you. Uh, Mary, darling, why, why don't you go and make Mr. Cartwright some oh, coffee? Oh, no, 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 it's all right. I was just, I was just, uh, just leaving. Thank you. Uh, what did you want to see me about? Well, uh, you understand that ordinarily I, I would never ask this, but... Russ! Oh, no, it's all right, Mary. Well, you see, uh, we had to push so hard in order to get here. That we, we ran out of supplies. And so I was wondering if uh, perhaps you couldn't uh, advance us a few dollars. There's actually no need for that. You can get all the supplies you want from our storeroom. Any one of the hands will tell you where it is. I'll uh, get along now. You, can, you know where I am if you need me. to you. I'm, I'm going to earn it. Not if you're drunk, you won't. Count so far, Paul. They're the best looking calves we've ever had. We ought to start branding pretty soon. Yeah, they are pretty good looking. We weren't so short handed. That's what Swarton doing. Well, you might as well know the truth, Paul. He, he didn't even show up to Chuck Wagon at noon. He just, just rode off somewhere. I don't know. Come on in. Hi, little Joe. How's it going? Pretty good. Yeah, all right. Coffee? No, uh, 
I just come to tell you... Well, I just come to tell you the bunkhouse has been robbed. Uh, what's missing? Six dollars from Charlie Drake and a bottle of whiskey from me. You sure? Well, I'm missing a bottle of whiskey, Mr. Cartwright. I'm sure. Let's have a look. Cartwright! Cartwright! That's all I heard from you since the day I married you. Now, don't you think I know why you wanted me to come here? Rest! No! Oh, did no, it? Rest! I'll tell rest you why you did it. You need no. to show me up. Now, that's why. Yeah. Cartwright, oh. well... No! No more coffee. Hot chocolate at night time. Missy say make you sleep better. <laughs> oh, everything much better since you here, Missy Mary. Here, let me do that. Huh? <laughs> What's the matter? Oh, nothing. I was just uh, a little stiff. Doing a little roping today, and I guess I'm not quite used to it. Now just lean over a little bit, all right? Good. Oh, yeah. <laughs> you just keep that up, and I, I may fall asleep sitting straight up. Well, why don't you? Uh, you know, thank Hop Singh. You thank Missy Mary. She is a very fine cook. Everything she touched tastes just a little bit better. Yes, you know. <laughs> thank you, Hop Singh. It's a fine idea, half lady, in this house. Everything is so much better. Hey, it'll take somebody pretty special to get into Hop Singh's kitchen. It sure does. The last time I was in there, he took a meat cleaver after me. <laughs> <laughs> I think he still thinks of me as a little girl. Uh, we'll have dessert in the living room. Why don't you go in, stretch out, and relax? All right. Good. your new housekeeper. Uh, you think I don't know what's going on here? Look, uh, Warden, why don't you get yourself sobered up? 
And then you can come back to me and I'll listen to every word you have to say. Uh, I... I want my wife! Yes. Come on, you go with me. Oh, come on. We, we, we don't need them. Come on. Ben. Hey, get it. Ben, I've got to go with him, please. I can't let you go with him. Please, get your hands. Please. Can't let, you can't go to him in this condition. I'll go back into the kitchen. You better take him to the sheriff's office. Wait a minute. Yeah, I'll, I'm going to get her back, you know. I have to kill you to do it. Well, unless you straighten yourself out, Warden. That's exactly what you'll have to do. You didn't press charges. Keeping you in jail is not going to do any good. You got to straighten yourself out. And, and meanwhile, you can tell my wife what a mistake she made marrying me. Is that it? You've done a pretty good job of telling her that yourself. Here's your wages. Hey, what, what's this for? To buy me off? And it won't work. She's my wife. And when I leave here, she leaves with me. Sober now. I'm telling you, sober. Number one, whatever it is you're thinking, you get that right out of your mind. And number two, you try hurting her again, and you'll really deal with me. Look who's here. Must be slim pickings all over. Give us a couple of beers, Cosmo. Howdy, Mr. Lassiter. The name's Slavin. Monk Slavin. Remember me? Yeah. Buy yourself and the rest of those saddle tramps a drink. Thanks, Mr. Lassiter. Who's he? He owns the Big L. You're not going to ask him for a job. Why not? They're all 
awful short of hands. Oh, come on. Don't kid yourself. You're marked bad just like the rest of us. Yes, I could. All the good ones are working. Look, I really want a job. Then there's one wide open for you. More than 20 miles of public land past the ranch boundaries. We all lose 50 to 100 strays there every year. There's a dollar a head bounty for every calf you bring out. Two dollars a steer. You want a job? Make one. You mean what you say about paying that bounty. I'm gonna try. Suit yourself. I'll pay. So will the others. So you're gonna go rounding up strays, huh, Mr. Wharton? Pays good money. What's wrong with it? Well, there's nothing wrong with it. Nothing at all. Except scrub and rock slopes that'll kill your horse in a day. Half crazy steers that you have to climb up and drive down by foot. And when you get mounted up, you've lost them again. That is, if you haven't broken your neck by then. Well, what do you know, Mr. Wharton's gonna go bounty hunting and strike a rich. <laughs> See, I, uh, mm. I want to thank you for that, uh, well, the comfort here that you're making for me. I think it's going to be real nice and, and very warm. It's going to be, well, I'm going to get a lot of use out of it. Oh, that's very sweet. I've been, uh, thinking about making a couple for the boys, too. Mary, you're just going to spoil us rotten. <laughs> <laughs> I like spoiling you. Yeah, I guess maybe that's a woman's reason for living. I don't know. <laughs> Somebody to spoil. <laughs> Ben, being here with you and little, little Joe and Horst, well, I don't know how to tell you what it, what it is I want to say. It, you don't have to say anything. Oh, no, no, please. I want to. Th there's a religion where they believe that when a person dies, he's born again. Well, that's what's happening with me. Being here with you, all the love and affection one can feel around here, <laughs> a sense of security. Well, that's, that's good. Well, it's, it's like what I used to feel when I was a little girl back home. Ben, I can't go back to... to humiliation. And, no, I just can't. I've made up my mind. I know what I have to do. I want to see a lawyer. I want to divorce Russ. It's a... It's a big step. No. Not when the love you once had for a man has died. You sure it has. I know what love is, Ben. I know it very well. It's what I want. It's what any woman wants. But, Ben, I can't find comfort and forgetfulness in a bottle the way Russ is doing. I just hope that you... that you're doing the right thing. I'm not a child. I'm not going to just rush into anything. Well, that's good. That, that means you don't have to rush into a divorce. No. No. No, I don't suppose I, I do. Then you'll wait. If that's what you think is best. I think it would be a, a wise 
decision. Food's a lot better than your wagon. <laughs> it sure is, isn't it? Yeah, that hop sing. Thank you, Walt. Mm. Hop sing got his cousin over here. He was afraid the other fellow was going to poison me. <laughs> hey, how are you today? Ed Lasser up on the line. Uh huh? I said Russ Wharton's collecting strays for bounty. He's bringing in quite a few of them, too. Hmm. Oh, that's good news. That means he's sober. Maybe he's getting some sense into him. Yeah, means he's getting some money, too. If he doesn't start drinking, come gunning for you again. No, Joe. Now, fella, you're all alone, working hard. Give some time to think. Just hope you're right. You took my advice. You're gonna buy the house a drink? Whiskey. Find any Ponderosa strays? I hear tell Ben Cartwright's got one of yours. <laughs> you mention my wife again, and I'll kill you. Oh. <laughs> But you're as about as happy as I am. Roundup's almost over. <laughs> yeah, the days get pretty long, don't they? Oh, they sure do. Who are you shipping out with this year? Oh, Mike Yates, same as usual. Just signed the papers at the lawyers. Well, that's what I'm here to do. Yeah. I'm running kind of late. I better get started, I guess. See you. Yeah. Say, Ben. Huh? You hear that uh, Russ Wharton's been uh, rounding up some strays for me? Yeah. Yeah, I did hear that. Hey, he's been doing a pretty good job for you, too. He's doing a good job for everybody, Ben. Not only me. Mm hmm Well, I'm, I'm glad to hear that. Ben, I, uh, I'm not much for gossip. But, uh, talk is that there's bad blood between you two. Well, yeah, the, yeah we, we had a few words. Not many secrets in Virginia City. Word is that, uh, Horton's wife is staying with you. Never try to keep that a secret. No. No, of course not. Well, uh, see you later, Ben.
to take a walk. Oh, Mary. Mm. Uh, do you mind if I come along with you? <laughs> no, I'd love it. There's something I'd like to discuss with you. Won't be too long. You're a good cookie. They sure are. <laughs> Howard Thurber tells me that you were in to see him. I was uh, hoping that you'd talk to me before you went to see a lawyer. I didn't talk to you because I... I knew that well, you'd only try to talk me out of it again. Well, uh... There might be reason that I might. Uh, I bumped into a friend of mine today at Led Lasseter, rancher, who uh, talked to me about Russ. Russ is doing some work for him. Running up strays. And he's doing a good job for him, too. <laughs> no. He's done this before. He, he's worked for a couple of days, and then, well, it never leads to anything. Well, I thought you should know that Russ is... Well, seems to be trying to pull himself together. Set himself up on his two feet. And I... I sure hate to see you do anything to put you in a corner without being able to get out. Oh, Ben, look, I'm... I'm sorry. I, I've made up my mind. I just would rather not talk about it, if you don't mind. Uh. <laughs> look... Ben, why don't we just enjoy a, a nice walk? Please? Come on. If you'd been counting the shots, you'd have known this gun is empty. I don't like a gun pointed in my direction, empty or not. What are you doing here? This isn't Ponderosa land. I checked that. I, uh... Heard you were lining up strays for the body. None of those are yours. I don't touch your cattle. Why not? You pay the same bond as anybody else? I don't like your money, Mr. Cartwright. How's my wife? She has a roof over her head. Oh, and that's more than I was able to give her. Is that what you're saying? Well, I... you ask the question, you answer it. I will. In due time. Hey, uh, the poor child that you're doing pretty good at this. Is that the best thing you've got to do with your time? Getting reports on me? I got work to do. What about Mary? Any word for her? Yeah. Yeah, tell her I'm uh, glad she's got a roof over her head. Well, 
dare you? This roundup is over. I'm gonna sleep for three days. Yeah, well, the roundup's not over yet. We better grab a little shut eye right now. Right. Good night. Good night, Good night. Good night. Good night. See you in the morning. They're wonderful boys, Ben. Yes, they are. I'm a very fortunate man. You know something, Ben? I envy you very much. You know something? I envy you very much. You have a whole wonderful life ahead of you. I wish I could believe that. Mary. I saw Russ today. <laughs> is he, uh, is he all right? I saw a man who you once told me about. A man with pride and dignity. Oh, the pride was a little wounded. And maybe there was a dent in the dignity, but it was all there. Russ is working hard. Day and night. He's doing well. I know he's proud of that. And he hasn't taken a drink. And he won't. Mary. I, uh... I don't know what discussions you've had with your lawyer, but... I sure hope that they haven't gone so far that you can't change your mind. I don't want to change my mind. It's too late, Ben. Don't you, don't you realize that? Happier than I've, I've been in years. Mary, I... <laughs> what? Mary, I, I want you to be the happiest young lady in the world. Everything that I could want for my own daughter. I guess I've... I've really made a fool of myself, haven't I? No, Mary, you... You could never make a fool of yourself with me. Fella gave me two dollars. He gave you this. Ain't no love letter. 
from your wife. <laughs> Half sing clad, round up over. Now you eat all meal regular time again. Yeah, well, I'll be home for supper tonight. Good. All right. Come to see Mary? I want to see you. I'm going to be leaving here. There's a few things that I wanted to say before I go. One of them is a, comes a little hard. Thanks. And tell her that I'm sorry. Tell her you're sorry. Nine years of married life, and all you can say about it is, is sorry. What, what's a man supposed to say? Well, I don't know. I imagine he could say quite a few things, like uh, maybe even some of the things that he used to say. She might like to hear them again. I made her come here. Hmm? I used her to make it easy for myself. Hmm? So you. This place. Everything that we had once. Only it fell apart in my hands. You know, I hated you. I hated you because you could give her everything that I couldn't. Uh, no. No, Russ, you did not hate me. You hated yourself. Although I, I don't know why. You didn't start a fire. You didn't start a flood. You didn't do any of those things. I, I, I know that. Now. Then why don't you tell Mary that you know that now? No, I don't want to hurt her anymore. I want her to have everything she deserves. Everything she deserves? Now, Russ, do you really think she has everything she deserves now? How much more is there? She is in love with you, you know. Well, you know that, don't you? Well, don't you? She always has been. Oh, you loco. Oh, Russ, you couldn't be more wrong. Oh, I'd hope that she... that she loves me as a daughter might love a father, but... she's looking for the love and security that she can find in, in you. She loves the man that you once were, the man that you are again today, now. Well... I'm afraid it's a little late for that, because I got the divorce papers today. What are you going to do about them? Here's the money that, that I earned rounding up those strays. Take out what I stole from you in the bunkhouse. And give the rest to Mary. I'm not going to run your errands for you. She's in her room. You can give her that money yourself. I'm right here, Uncle Ben. Nice. So do you. 
was wrong. I was too. I heard what, uh, what you said to Ben. Well, whatever you want, not for yourself. That, that's what I want for you. Cái chốt là Tú dạy học rồi nhưng mà cậu ấy bảo là dạy học không được Đời trước là khác Thì là... Thực ra nó dạy không nhưng nó vẫn không như thế thì nó cũng không ok Bọn kia là nó cũng phải làm slide hết rồi Thế là nó dạy kiểu nó làm hết slide hết rồi Chắc cần đâu chị ơi, cái bảo cũng được, mình cũng phải dạy cần ấy Chẳng qua là bọn nó làm <cười> Mình chỉ cần đan thì đơn giản là nó bé thôi mà Chứ cần gì à Thế quá À với cả review Review nhưng mà phải Review có tâm một chút Khoảng 8 phút tài trợ thì em chẳng bảo là cái đấy thì lại kinh quá bọn xe phone là nó được tài trợ chứ bọn e trên đồ được xe phone tài trợ
Không em thấy thấy cũng được đấy Đi nhà sách bọn nó có cho quay mình ấy chưa ấy luôn ấy quay bình thường thì thì chị quay rồi để ví dụ ví dụ ngày xưa quay các cái đầu sách ấy, thì chị quay rồi giống như cũng riêng là chỗ đấy hơi khó khăn còn còn mình đứng ở trong đấy để mình 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 buồn ở trong đấy thì cũng thích như nào mỗi cái nhau tám phút đấy không thì ấy thế thì lưu sách cũng được Chuyện mà mình quay cái điện thoại như thế này mà mình cứ ngồi mình thao thao bất chuyện Mà ở ngoài chứ mình lại trong mình Mà mình còn chưa đọc đúng không? Rồi, rồi. Ok Thích thấy quay 10 cái video xong đấy không? Không phải khả kỳ lắm nhỉ? Mình đã vừa tô màu xong quả kiwi Ờ... Uh... Cảm ơn mọi người đã theo dõi hết video của mình và đừng quên ấn like, subscribe kênh để ủng hộ cho mình nhé. Xin chào.